Good evening. This evening we're going to uh, do a sutta that is called the Six Sets of Six from the Majima Nikaya. This is the Chichaka Sutta number 148. Now tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different because when we were traveling we put together a cue sheet and I can get this to you if I, you have my, give me my, your emails after the retreat. But I just want to help you understand a little bit about this sutta. The sutta is really very, very special. When, um, when we go through this, it will demonstrate pretty much the whole teaching of anatta, and it will ground you in a very special way to understand the way that the Buddha was teaching. It's a very uh, good sutta because you discover how meticulous the Buddha's investigation was and for you to know how everything works, you get everything out of the sutta all at once. Mm -hmm. It's broken down into eight pieces. The summary sets up the names of the six sets for the six sets of six. The second part of the sutta is called the enumeration and it breaks down each set clearly for you one by one. The third section that you will hear the names of each of these sections as we go through it, the demonstration of not self. And this is the first stage of a drill that he's teaching the monks in one of the camps. He's teaching them about anatta perspective and the impersonal nature. And when you're doing this, if you close your eyes while I'm reading and sense, go through each one of the sense doors and use each one to demonstrate how this works, then when you sit afterwards, you go very, very deep. The fourth section is the origination of identity. And this is where the Buddha explains the idea of self and how uh, we began to take everything personally. That's what this section is doing. We grew up following everything around us, just the way little children learn. Everybody around us is taking everything personally and we watch that happening the majority of times. And so we learn to take everything personally while we're growing up. The fifth part is called the cessation of identity. Now he begins a drill it's a practice system that the monks practiced. And they're embracing an unbiased, selfless view, and they're adopting a harmonious, impersonal perspective. They're learning how to systematically retrain the mind in the uh, right effort that you're practicing with the six Rs. You're recognizing an unwholesome. You're letting the unwholesome go. You're bringing up a wholesome, and you keep the wholesome going. And you're doing this through using this retraining method to purify mind. And this is an example of what he was doing with the monks, and we can do it too. The sixth section is called the underlying tendencies. Now, the underlying tendencies is showing you the ignorance of how th the, we're in ignorance of how things work. And it's slipping into an outer frame of mind. And with you begin with no knowledge. And he leads us to understand that we're in trouble if we don't understand how everything originates, how it disappears, mm -hmm. how we get caught in the gratification of it, meaning you get personally involved in it, the danger of this, and the escape. It is not possible to get free, he explains, unless you understand these five pieces. And this is how dependent origination teaches you those five pieces. So this sutta is beginning to weave together what you had in the first part of the retreat. And other parts of the retreat, you're going to see how this all works. The seventh section is the abandonment of the underlying tendencies. We hear how we can abandon these tendencies, which are the wrong tendencies, by coming to a clear understanding. And at the end of each of these sections, you'll hear him say how it is possible to get free from the suffering 
after you abandon these wrong tendencies. The eighth section, which is the last section, is exciting because this is called the liberation. In the last section, the student shifts and when he totally lets go, his mind begins to open up in a different way. He experiences a shift in personality through becoming disenchanted with the things that he was excited about before. He feels the shift. And then this disenchantment moves on into a deeper level that's called the dispassion. And then through the dispassion, he experiences what the Pali word is vimuti, or the liberation, and at that point is where he discovers the experience of Nibbana. So after that, the reactions in life are fading away. They don't come up readily. Instead of the reactions, in most cases, people begin to respond systematically, automatically, responding and staying cooler than reacting. So what I want you to do is just listen, close your eyes, and imagine that tonight you're being taught as the students in the Grove. Listen and don't talk after this is over. Exercise a little if you want, but come back in and sit immediately because you will sit much deeper than before. So the, the end of this is simply just sit and observe. So this is the six sets of six taken from the Mishima Nikaya, the Chichaka Sutta number 148, using the translation of Bhikkhu Bodhi and published by Wisdom Publications. For the sake of the drill and the training, the word students has been put in place of the word bhikkhus or monks. Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living in Sawati in Jetta's Grove. Anathapindika's Park. And there he addressed the students thus, Students, Venerable Sir, they replied. And the Blessed One said this, Students, I will teach you the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing. I shall reveal a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure. That is the six sets of six. Now listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the students replied, and the Blessed One said this. The summary. The six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood and the six classes of craving should be understood. The enumeration. The six internal bases should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said? There are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, and the mind base. So it was in reference to this that it was said the six internal bases should be understood and this is the first set of six. The six external bases should be understood. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? There are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base, the tangible base, and the mind object base. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six external bases should be understood. And this is the second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So it was in reference to this that it was said the six classes of consciousness should be understood. And this is the third set of six. 
The six classes of contact should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. And the meeting of the three is ear contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. And the meeting of the three is tongue contact. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. And the meeting of the three is body contact. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. So it was in reference to this that it was said the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. The six classes of feeling should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is ear contact. And with ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. Dependent on the nose and odors, <coughs> nose consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is nose contact. And with nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is tongue contact. And with tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. And the meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of feeling should be understood. And this is the fifth set of six. The six classes of craving should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. And with eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. And with eye feeling as condition, there is eye craving. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. And with ear feeling as condition, there is ear craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. And the meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. And with tongue feeling as condition, there is tongue craving. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. With body feeling as condition, there is body craving. Dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. And with mind feeling as condition, there is mind craving. And so it was in reference to this that it was said, the six classes of craving should be understood. And this is the sixth set of six. The demonstration of not self. If anyone says the I is self, that is not acceptable. 
the rise and fall of the eye is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the I is self. Thus the I is not self. If anyone says that forms are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of forms are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that forms are self. And thus the I is not self. Forms are not self. If anyone says I consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I consciousness is self. Thus the I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. If anyone says I contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the I contact is self. Thus the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self. If anyone says I feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that I feeling is self. Thus the I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. I contact is not self. I feeling is not self. If anyone says I craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I craving is self. Thus the I is not self. Forms are not self. I consciousness is not self. I contact is not self. I feeling is not self. I craving is not self. If anyone says the ear is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the ear is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that the ear is self. Thus the ear is not self. If anyone says sounds are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of sounds are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say sounds are self. Thus the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. If anyone says ear consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. But that is not why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that ear consciousness is self. Thus the I is not self, sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self. If anyone says ear contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that ear contact is self. Thus the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self. Ear contact is not self. If anyone says ear feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear feeling is seen and understood. Since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. 
That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, your feeling is self. Thus the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. Your consciousness is not self. Your contact is not self. Your feeling is not self. If anyone says ear craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. And that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that ear craving is self. Thus the ear is not self. Sounds are not self. Ear consciousness is not self. Ear contact is not self. Ear feeling is not self. Ear craving is not self. If anyone says the nose is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the nose is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. And that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the nose is self. Thus the nose is not self. If anyone says odors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of odors is seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say odors are self. Thus, the nose is not self. Odors are not self. If anyone says nose consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose consciousness is self. Thus, the nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. If anyone says nose contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. But that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that nose contact is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self. If anyone says nose feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose feeling is self. Thus, the nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self. Nose feeling is not self. If anyone says nose craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. And that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that nose craving is self. Thus, the nose is not self. Odors are not self. Nose consciousness is not self. Nose contact is not self. Nose feeling is not self. And nose craving is not self. If anyone says the tongue is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the tongue is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls, and that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the tongue is self. Thus the tongue is not self. If anyone says flavors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the flavors is seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that flavors are self. Thus the tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. If anyone says tongue consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. 
That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that tongue consciousness is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. If anyone says tongue contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue contact is self. Thus the tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. If anyone says tongue feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue feeling is self. Thus the tongue is not self. Flavors are not self. Tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. Tongue feeling is not self. If anyone says tongue craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue craving is seen and understood, and since, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. <coughs> that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue craving is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness are not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self, tongue craving is not self. If anyone says the body is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the body is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the body is self, and thus the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tangibles is seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tangibles are self. Thus the body is not self, and tangibles are not self. If anyone says body consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls, and that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that body consciousness is self. Thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. If anyone says body contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body contact is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self. If anyone says the body feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. But that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, Body feeling is self, and thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self. If anyone says body craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say that body craving is self. And thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. Body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self. Body craving is not self. If anyone says 
mind is self. That is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the mind is seen and understood. Since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. And that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, mind is self. Thus the mind is not self. If anyone says that mind objects are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind objects are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind <coughs> objects are self. Thus the mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. If anyone says mind consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. But that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind consciousness is self. And thus mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. If anyone says mind contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That's why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind contact is self. Thus, mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. If anyone says mind feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind feeling is seen and understood. Since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. But that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind feeling is self. And thus the mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. Mind feeling is not self. If anyone says mind craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. But that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind craving is self. Thus the mind is not self. Mind objects are not self. Mind consciousness is not self. Mind contact is not self. Mind feeling is not self. Mind craving is not self. The origination of the identity. Now students, this is the way leading to the origination of that identity. One regards the I thus. This is mine. This I am, this is myself. One regards forms thus, this is mine. This I am, this is myself. One regards I consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the ear thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards sounds thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the nose thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards odors thus. This is mine, this I am, this is myself. 
One regards no consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards no contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards no feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards no craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards flavors thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the body thus. This is mine. This I is. This I am. This is myself. One regards tangibles thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards body craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the mind thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind objects thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind consciousness thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind contact thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards mind craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. The cessation of identity. Now, students, this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards forms thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards I craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the ear thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards sounds thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards ear craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the nose thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards odor thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. 
One regards knows consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards knows contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards knows feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards knows craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards flavors thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. <coughs> this is not myself. One regards tongue contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the body thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tangibles thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the mind thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind objects thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind feeling thus. This is mine. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. <coughs> <clears throat> the underlying tendencies students dependent on the eye and forms eye consciousness arises the meeting of the three is eye contact with eye contact as condition there arises an eye feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when touched by a pleasant feeling if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regards to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant I feeling without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful eye feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to this neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling.
without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises, and the meeting of the three is ear contact, and with ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling that is felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape to that kind of I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises, and the meaning of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape to that kind of nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on the tongue and flavors. Tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. And with tongue contact as condition, there is a tongue feeling, felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape, to that kind of tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, 
without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regards to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to an either pleasant nor painful body feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is impossible. Students, dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. <coughs> when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, its origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regards to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one should here and now make an end to suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards the painful mind feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to an either pleasant or painful mind feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. The abandonment of the underlying tendencies. Students, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises, and the meeting of the three is I contact. With I contact as condition, there arises an I feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant I feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, weep, beating one's best, and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by an either pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, 
that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant eye feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful eye feeling, and by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regards to that ear feeling, then the underlying <coughs> tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end to suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for a pleasant ear feeling, by abandoning the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students, dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises, and the meeting of the three is nose contact. And with nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling, felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape from that kind of nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, and by extirpating the underlying tendency in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students, Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, or lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one understands as it actually is, its origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regards to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency 
towards ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible students dependent on the body and tangibles body consciousness arises the meeting of the three is body contact and with body contact as condition there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant body feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it or remain holding to it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful eye body feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regards to that body feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within <coughs> one students that one shall here and now make an end to suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency for pleasant body feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible students dependent on the mind and mind objects <coughs> mind consciousness arises the meaning of the three is mind contact with mind contact as condition there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it and remain holding to it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful mind feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling if one understands as it actually is its origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regards to that kind of mind feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion for painful mind feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regards to a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible the liberation seeing thus students a well taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye disenchanted with forms disenchanted with eye consciousness disenchanted with eye contact disenchanted with eye feeling disenchanted with eye craving he becomes disenchanted with the ear disenchanted with sounds disenchanted with ear consciousness disenchanted with ear contact disenchanted with ear feeling disenchanted with ear craving he becomes disenchanted with the nose disenchanted with odors disenchanted with nose consciousness disenchanted with nose contact disenchanted with nose feeling disenchanted with nose craving he becomes disenchanted with the tongue disenchanted with flavors disenchanted with tongue consciousness disenchanted with tongue contact disenchanted with tongue feeling disenchanted with tongue craving he becomes disenchanted with the body disenchanted with tangibles disenchanted with body consciousness disenchanted with body contact disenchanted with body feeling disenchanted with body craving he becomes disenchanted with the mind 
disenchanted with mind objects, disenchanted with mind consciousness, disenchanted with mind contact, disenchanted with mind feeling, and disenchanted with mind craving. Being disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate, and through dispassion, mind is liberated. And when it is liberated, there comes the knowledge. It is liberated. He understands that birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming into any state of being. And that is what the Blessed One said. The students were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. And now while this discourse was spoken to the monks that time, through not clinging, the minds of 60 monks were liberated from the taints.